drunks. Mm, that's drunk. Since I'm on a big Natsume kick after playing through Pocky and Rocky Reshrined and Ninja Savior's Return of the Warriors, let's go back to the old Super Nintendo with another Natsume game that will hopefully one day get a similar treatment. It's Spanky's Quest, where you play as a monkey named Spanky and you play with balls, and that is such a low-hanging fruit that it's hanging six feet underground since every joke about that premise has been done to death. Despite a name that would send Beavis and Butthead into convulsions, Spanky's Quest is actually a good game and it's available right now on Nintendo Switch Online. It was released in July 1992 in North America, but it came out several months before that in Japan. So this is an early SNES game and it shows, the graphics aren't the best here. I should also mention that Spanky's Quest was first released for Game Boy before getting a retooled version for Super Nintendo, and considering how simple the gameplay is here, I'm guessing Natsume felt that this game didn't need a whole lot of bells and whistles. But let's face it, the title, combined with the first impression this game makes with such ordinary looking graphics, that all makes it easy to see why this game might get ignored or dismissed entirely. Spanky's Quest is a puzzle platformer with the premise involving Spanky the monkey going on a picnic before a castle falls from the sky on top of him, trapping him in one of the towers. So he's got to get out of this tower and five more towers to get out of the castle. And how does he do that? By bouncing magic balls on his head, of course. Spanky can take three hits and gets unlimited continues to get through six levels, split up into ten stages each, with a password system to save your progress. The goal of each stage is to collect all the keys so you can unlock the door and move on to the next stage. And to get keys, you have to defeat enemies. And to defeat enemies, you make a magic ball grow by bouncing it on your head a few times. If you hit an enemy with just the ball, it'll stun them for a bit, but not take them out entirely. You have to press the A button, let the ball bounce on your noggin, press the A button again at the right time, and the ball will turn into something else. Have it bounce once, and it'll turn into a baseball. Have it bounce twice, it turns into a line of soccer balls. Three times, and it turns into a volleyball that acts as a bomb, and four times, it turns into a shower of basketballs. It's not as easy as it sounds, especially the further you get into the game. Obviously, the more times you're able to bounce the ball on your head, the better your attack is, but it can be tricky to do that with the constant barrage of stuff that gets in your way, whether that's strawberries, lemon drops, oranges, kiwi, and various other fruit. Yeah, I don't get the whole sports fruit motif, but whatever. There's also moving platforms to contend with, cannons that shoot you around, fireballs getting shot at you, so dealing with all that while bouncing a ball on your head can get kind of tricky, especially considering that you also need to aim and time your attack correctly, which again is easier said than done. It can be tough to take out some of the small or quicker enemies, but that lends well to this game's addictive quality. It's real easy to get past the first world, but after that, you gotta make sure your skill is honed to the point where you can jump around and bounce a ball on your head, and attack, and make sure it's the right attack. There's also plenty of boss fights in this game. They make things simpler since they're usually huge sprites, and that makes them easy targets, but they offer their own challenge. Thankfully, the game helps you out a bit with items like hats. There's a straw hat that slows you down when you're falling, a viking hat that gives you extra health, a feather hat that speeds you up, a top hat that allows you to skip to the largest ball without having to bounce it four times, and a baseball cap, which acts as a magnet so when you bounce a ball, you don't have to get underneath it. It'll just follow you. It also really helps that the music in this game is excellent, and since I've been playing this, I've gotten a lot of it stuck in my head lately, so now it's your turn to get it stuck in your head. So yeah, Spanky's Quest is pretty good. The name and premise make it sound like it's out of the Leisure Suit Larry series, but it's a good puzzle platformer that offers a lot of content, and the gameplay is easy to get the hang of, but not all that easy to get good. Finishing this game will take you well over an hour, so there's plenty of game here, but not too much game. And hey, here's hoping this one also someday gets the Natsume, Tango Project treatment other games have gotten, but even if it doesn't, this game is surprisingly pretty good just as it is, even if you sound like a complete lunatic trying to describe it to someone in a five minute video. Alright, I want to thank you for watching, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.